Hello everybody. Um, welcome to this TED Talk entitled Using Excel with STAT and RAM. My name is Wen Tao Zhang. I'm the product manager for Interoperability Solutions. Uh, part of that involves looking at different ways we can uh, share data amongst our own applications and external applications. In this case, it's Microsoft Excel. So without further ado, let's look at the agenda. So this is what we're going to cover today. First of all is the motivation, the why. So just because we can do something doesn't mean we should. In this case, um, it's really helpful. And I'm going to convince you why uh, Excel would be a great addition to your tool set to using RAM structure system instead. Bro. I'm going to discuss native versus programmatic approaches, what they are, what that means. I'm going to look at our STAT and RAM product line and how native and programmatic approaches uh, implement it. And finally, where to get help after this meeting. So looking at motivation, the why. Um, all of us as engineers, I'm sure, have used and created many Excel spreadsheets in our work. Um, and Excel really is the original analyses and design and reporting workhorse in the modern day engineering office. So what, why is it so popular? Looking at the pros, um, it's really flexible. So there's flexibility, modifying any cell and link any formula as you please. But it's really a double-edged sword, so to speak, because of the fact that it's so flexible. Um, complexity creeps in, spreadsheet grows unmanageable. Many sheets, many cells linking all over the place. Right? Um, for pros, it's easy to do custom uh, right design formulas on the fly. You're not stuck with a black box, so to speak. Um, as engineers, we like to deal with tables, so tabular formula-driven structure. Uh, that's a plus, of course. And you can do custom reporting of results as you see fit. Looking at some of the cons, um, it's incapable, unfeasible, or even not practical to do complex FEA in Excel um, on its own. There's no logic checks, and it could be prone to human errors. So um, you got to really make sure the formulas you got in are correct. So with any modern engineering analyses and design applications, um, like Bentley, RAM Structure System, and Stat Pro, we've mostly taken care of the cons side um, that you see here. So we've taken care of complexity and logic checks. So modifications in one module flow on to the next. Uh, you're not stuck as the glue. Uh, we've taken care of the fact that um, we've got dedicated analyses engines um, on, unlike in Stat Pro. So what we want to do is really merge the pros um, in Excel, the flexibility, custom writing, with the analyses capabilities, the robust um, analyses engines of RAM structure system in Stat Pro. Okay? So we want to get the best of both worlds. And with these two combined, uh, you get immense productivity. It's a powerful productivity combination. So what I mean when I say uh, native versus programmatic. So by native, I mean they're either easy or built-in features or even workarounds to allow some sort of data to transfer to Excel and in some cases even back to your original application. They're simple manipulation without involving any custom code. Okay, um, But when it comes to programmatic, uh, it really involves a application programming interface or API. So it has the ultimate flexibility and power. You can pretty much do, do anything. Uh, you can wield the application to your will. Um, if you're just using these tools, so we have many of these tools floating around in online communities, on B communities. Um, if you're just using them and just hitting the run button, you really don't need programming knowledge just to use it. Okay. But if you are doing any tweaking, modifying um, to suit your needs, you, you would require rudimentary VBA programming knowledge. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover um, the Stat Pro native features first. So in Stat Pro, um, natively, we have these tables, right? So in the middle, you would model your structure. On the right, you have these tables, no coordinates tables, beam tables, etc. So Stepro allows direct manipulation of nodes, coordinates table, and other geometry tables. So what we want to do is we want to create this curve truss. Um, so how do we do that? Right. So 
this curve is driven by certain formulas in Excel. So uh, we can copy and paste to and from Excel columns or even entire tables. Okay, so I'll show this shortly. The next feature that is native, um, a native Excel feature in Stat Pro would be the reporting side of things. So Stat Pro already has extensive reporting capabilities, um, but you can still copy and paste these results table in Excel and then uh, filter, sort as you see fit. Okay. And now with that, I'm going to quickly jump on over to my Stat Pro file here. Okay, so I got a, a empty step profile here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to structure wizard. Uh, open. I'm going to bring in a pret truss width of zero. Whoops, width of zero. Ten. Zero. I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to bring this structure into step pro. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to add four more members, extra node here and extra node here. Zero, ten, extra node, and then fifty, ten. Okay, so now I'm going to add a, add a couple of, add four beams actually, one here. Now looking at front view, okay, so we got this truss with a parallel core, but what we want is we want this top and bottom core, different curves, okay, so how do we achieve that? So first off, um, I'm going to sort these nodes, so I do this by selecting no cursor, select all the nodes on screen, go to node tools, Renumber nodes, yes. So notice this 41, that really should read uh, 22 onwards, right? So first I'm going to sort Y coordinate, and then X coordinate. Hit a set. Let's do that again. Okay, so you see that says 22 to 42. So now uh, we all know we can directly type in here, but what I want to do is I want to paste values in here. So I'll just show you what the Excel spreadsheet looks like. So this simple Excel spreadsheet has uh, similar parameters to my um, truss. So let's say if I modify that, that changes with me, right? And these values are just the bottom and top core values. And this column here uh, are just the bottom and top chords, uh, Y values. So what I can do is I can just copy this, this column, Control C, jump over to Excel over here. Hit Control V. I'm presented with the column uh, mapping dialog. So here you can map X, Y, Z, what have you. So in this case, the column in memory is Y. So I'm going to hit OK. And just like that, without writing a line of code, we got our nodes, um, no Y value to reflect those calculated in Excel. So if you want to quickly kind of put these geometric structures in, this is a really good method, and I highly recommend it. Okay, so the second um, Step Pro native feature I talked about uh, is reporting capabilities and getting it into Excel. So let's see that in action. So I'm going to close out of this model, jump into a model um, that have low cases in. So I ran the analyses. 
Okay, so what I want to see is I would want to see the node displacement um, report. Okay, so here you have some sorting, uh, but what if you want to completely customize the report to as you see fit, right? So we get a table of node displacement here. Select this, hit Control C, go on over to Excel to any sheet. Okay, Control V, go to Insert table. Tick, my table has headers. Hit OK. Now you can sort and filter to whatever you like. Imagine you have more low cases, the only concern with low case number one, etc. You, you can check this. You can, um, you know, sort, filter as you see fit on this table. Change even the way it looks. All right. So just then, that covered the uh, the two native main native features I see uh, interacting with um, Excel from StatPro. So now we want to move on to programmatic approaches. So when it comes to StatPro, um, we have the OpenStat API, and it really allows you to incorporate data or drive StatPro from beyond just a graphical user interface using programming language Excel VBA, and um, you, it's really powerful in that you can leverage step pro analysis results and use your own design spreadsheet. So this screenshot here, we have a we have a concrete um, beam um, design spreadsheet and, and we got some analyses results. Okay, so let's see that and, and other spreadsheets in action. So I'm in step pro, I'm gonna go to uh, example eight. Okay, so I got this model here. Okay, this model is already being analyzed. And let's say I'm concerned with beam number 14. I want to design for it. I have the analysis result, now I want to design for it. I'm going to jump on over to my um, design spreadsheet. So here, this is a, like any, design spreadsheet, you enter parameters internally, it checks it, but in saving, instead of you having to repeatedly input the stat analysis result, what we can do is we can automatically bring those results in, all right? So with this model open, uh, we enter the member number we're interested in, in this case 14, okay? So no, notice this, MZ max is at zero. I'm going to hit get results. So just then it blinked on the screen. I'm not sure how it translated over there. So when I come back to stat pro output, we see um, VBA in the background using open stat uh, pulled in the low cases, um, the member start end moments, and to produce this overall max sagging moment. Okay. And my concrete um, design spreadsheet relies on this. So you can see the power of this, right? You can customize this to however you design um, your your members, right? So you're no longer constrained. Even though StatPro have an extensive collection of design codes, um, you're no longer constrained by that. You can still leverage this analysis engine and use your own design spreadsheet if you need. Okay. So how exactly is that done? For, for, for this one case, um, I thought, why don't I jump into a simpler um, example with only 10 lines of code, okay? So what I'll show, <clears throat> what I show is here. Okay, so, so this, is a, this is a similar sheet, except it's much simpler. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure this developer um, uh, ribbon is turned on. So in Excel, you want to go File, Options, Customize Ribbon, Developer Ribbon Turn On, checked. Okay. So with Developer Ribbon Turn On, you can add buttons and um, assess the macro editor as you see fit. Okay. So in here, the, 
at the moment there are no formulas in here, right? This is just a simple, um, simple design spreadsheet. All the magic lies in all the code behind this button. So if you want to find out what was the code running behind this button, you right click, go to assign macro, and we're going to edit. So you see, it doesn't take that many lines of code, right, to, to, to bring this out. I'll show you what it actually does. Okay. So if I hit pull results, it instantly populated um, the the member forces um, for member 13 at a distance of 6 meters for location 1 at that section. Okay. So if I were to modify this, you see that change? All right. So even with this very, very simple example, you can start leveraging doing um, single member design for one, one low case, right? From here, you can um, enter your other design formulas as necessary. I'm going to run through um, what the code itself actually means in this scratch pad um, right here, all right? So I'm going to do something similar to what we did in the first spreadsheet, except this time I'm pulling in uh, reaction values, okay? So again, a simple spreadsheet, okay? Now, um, I'll run through a quick um, VBA primer, so to speak, to, to get us going. So right now, assign macro, edit. At the moment, this button does nothing. Okay, hit button, nothing happens. Very simply, if I want to start um, interacting, right, message box. Hello. You can either hit the play button or hitting this button, it executes the action. Um, th that's in between sub and end sub. Okay. And to understand the rest of the code, we need to um, cover some basics in regards to assessing cells um, in, in VBA. For example, that says low case, right? I can say here, cells 1, 1. That is saying, um, SS uh, row 1, column 1, get the value of that cell and, and put it uh, into a message box. If I hit run, If I hit run, okay, we, we see that. So now we can retrieve value, but can we edit value, right? Can we input value? We can very easily do that. So uh, look at this cell here, row three, column two, okay, three, column two. I can set as value equal five, let's say. We see that. So now we, we got a way to retrieve value and to add value. Okay, so this is just a simple VBA primer to understand the rest of the code. Now, um, to, to get going, we just paste this. In, in here to corresponding to the button click. Now I'll explain what this means. These lines of code is just establishing variables. Okay, so it's just establishing support node is a number, low case is a number, a reaction array as a box, just just a list of um, a, a list to fill values in. Okay, and as a minimum boiler code, we must have this to interact with StatPro, a get object StatPro. You can copy and paste this most of the times. And remember what we saw before with cells, right? So low case corresponds to row one, column two, its value, low case support nodes. And then what might be a little bit confusing here is what's happening here. What's this output get support reactions? How do we figure that out? So how that works is we will dig into the OpenStat API documentation. Okay. The OpenStat API documentation contains everything you need. 
So if we want to deal with reactions, right? So in here we can we can investigate uh, this document. So um, support create support. Analysis results, notes, joint support, okay? Get support reactions. So even within here, we have um, sample codes you can copy and paste and study, okay? And what I have there is not too dissimilar to this, output.get support reactions. And from here, what we're saying is once we get the support reaction, we're running a small for loop and then we're chucking in the third row, uh, second column, first column, second column, third column, et cetera, and onwards, okay? And one tip as well, um, once you paste the code in, you can very easily add uh, breakpoints in your code to find out what's happening, okay? So for example, I'm gonna add a breakpoint in here and a breakpoint in here. Now when I hit button one, it stops at this line, right? It stops at this line. So to continue execution, I can just hit F5, or you can query um, the value store in this variable. So in this case, low case, support nodes. Okay, so uh, the reaction array has a, has a value, right? So now it's applying incrementally in, into these cells. Okay, are we seeing this updated? All right, so my recommendation is if you're getting started with OpenStat API is to look at um, these code samples, copy in and utilize these breakpoints. They're very powerful um, and, and they help you understand really what's going on. So just like that, we got reactions and we can um, design and use that, uh, use that in our design spreadsheets. So now um, let's do something similar with RAM structural systems and investigate is native Excel features. So natively, I see there's um, two ways we can get some sort of data into Excel. So in RAM structural system, we can do reports. Um, but if we select report post-processing text file, um, and when we do a report, it'll prompt us to save that to a CSV. Okay, which we can open in Excel. Another way, uh, this is a in tech preview, um, there's due to be a UI change for this, um, is a SQL report generator that's available in RAM structural systems, as we see here. And from here, um, we see a screenshot of what the Excel report looks like. Okay, just let me just quickly jump over the RAM structural systems to show you exactly what I mean by that. So from within here, post-processing, make sure text file is checked. And in this case, I want to export gravity beam loads. Let's save that here. Hit save. Okay. Now when I open this in Excel, right, we get some semblance of um, columns and rows and tables that you could reuse. Okay, so, so, so that's one way. That's the first way. Now going back in here, I mentioned um, SQLite report generator. So first you got to export geometry to SQLite, which I've already done. And in here, if you've done your RAM frame and export as results, even um, even no displacement table, member forces table are exported as well. Okay, so here these are the available tables, and what we want is we want to bring all of that into into an Excel file. So we can hit save. So we can hit generate. OK, 
Okay, report generated. Now, um, I want to open the generator report. Okay, so very comprehensive report down here. I'll just quickly jump through the tabs. You got your floor type data, story data, column data, brace data, wall data, beam data, displacement. Okay, frame story share. Very comprehensive. All right. Okay, so so um, just then we covered the native RAM structure system features. Okay, and then very quickly the programmatic side of things. It's it's quite similar to OpenStat in that you be manipulating um, your models or essay scanner models uh, via VBA. Okay, so what I have here is a beam lister example. So we have um, RAM structure system beam design, and then we bring those design in. And let's see that in action. One thing to note, though, for um, for RAM data SS API as opposed to OpenStat, um, is that you you must close RAM structural system. Uh, it can't be running when you're using it. Okay, so if this is running, um, it, it wouldn't work. And if there's a user file or a .usr file that's present in the same directory, that that must be deleted. That wouldn't work. Okay, so, so this is a beam lister, and the idea is I want to pull in all the beam design in a RAM structure system file. Okay, so I hit load RSS, and I select my RAM structure system file, and I hit open. Do we see that? That flash and this table getting generated automatically. Okay. So here you can filter as you see fit the floors, where there's lateral gravity framing, um, start count, start demand, diameter, start length, etc. Eric also created a um, a RAM. Uh, estimates, steel estimates report, which is much more comprehensive than this, and I highly suggest um, you to, to check it out. Okay, so with that, where do we get help from here? Um, so with RAM.RSS, there's RAM.RSS Techno on BE Communities. Um, at the bottom of this site, there's um, example files that you can access. And if you look for um, these example files uh, with file extension DA, um, you, you get a lot of uh, sample uh, files to work with. Actually, let me show you what it looks like in Internet Explorer. So if we open this link, what we get is... RAM data SS here. So this is a great article written by Eric. And if we scroll to the bottom, you got these tools. Okay. This DA for dummies is a very informative document that walks you through step by step how to how to perform RAM data um, ASS API. And what that looks like when open and downloaded is like so. Okay, it walks you through literally step by step how to repeat the same. All right. Now, when it comes to the actual documentation itself, um, that is located um, on your computer right now. If you have RAM structure systems, okay, it's called RAM Data SS Developers Guide. is the definitive source for RAM Data SS and what it can use. For OpenStat, we 
uh, recommend BE communities, search for OpenStat. And if you have STAT installed, under your samples um, model folder in OpenStat, um, you, you get that concrete beam design example, okay, for, for you to investigate. And similar to uh, RAM data SS, we have a very extensive OpenStat help, okay, and it's located on your computer as well if you have STAT Pro installed. When open, it looks like so. Okay, you can search for modules and, and ways to proceed. All right, before, before, uh, before we get into a couple of the questions that have been posted, just wanted to expand on uh, that slide you had a couple back, Squintel, about where to get help. Yep. Uh, within B communities, there's there's a forum. So if you if you were to to post a question in that forum, there's you know anyone that's a member of B communities could potentially see that, help you with your endeavors and going down this path of extracting information using our APIs. Um, if not, usually there's a uh, technical support person that's kind of monitoring that or moderating those forums and those questions do I just answered one just the, the other day so eventually those do get they get over to the development team so that's another place to to get help okay let's uh, let's dive into the first question here where can we get more information on OpenStad um, Wentel you covered this but I'll let you sure let you take it again yeah um, so OpenStat's documentation is quite extensive. So again, on our uh, B communities forum, if you just type in OpenStat, it will, it will take you to um, uh, getting started resources. Um, but I think the first step would be to get a grasp on VBA itself. So just a simple Google search on VBA Primer or VBA Excel. Um, and they will get you started and then you start getting into the mindset of looking at how do I push and pull data within Excel itself and then um, and then when, once you get that good VBA kind of fundamental the rest will flow to you really easily when you can see the OpenStat uh, documentation. Yeah just to add to that um, Excel itself changes over time so some of some of the things that are out there from documentation standpoint of you know how to set up Excel VBA is dependent upon the version of Excel that you're that you're running. So Wintow had showed stuff from a more modern version of Excel. Some of the things that you might see in the RAM data access documentation is from maybe Excel 2003. So you may need to do some Googling there to, to find the equivalent steps for whatever version of Excel you're running. Okay, next next question. Can you do the same thing with RAM column designs? I can, I can take this. I think, I think this probably applies to you know. Can you get at uh, capacity related information, things like that? Um, for steel columns, the I column interface has properties for unbraced length and interaction ratio. But what you wouldn't see is say the actual flexural capacity or shear capacity and the reason because the reason that is is there's a, there's a lot of design information preliminary design information that's stored in memory with when RAM stru structural system is being used that isn't actually saved with the database and since you're using data access when it's closed those those res those types of results aren't available unless we were to write them out to the database so there's a bit of a limitation on design information that you can extract from the program, but there's there's a, a pretty extensive set of analysis results. Wintel showed uh, how you can get at frame member forces and displacements, so that that type of information is is available. Cool. Okay. Uh, another question here: Can you run without launching STAD? Wintel, I'll let you uh, take right. that. Um, I think I mentioned that earlier. So the way it's been designed is OpenStat is a alternative means of um, of working with the Stat Pro program. So it's 
Um, so it's alternative means to using a graphical user interface. So step pro, um, in all instances I've seen, um, have to be running okay, with the model you're, you're interested in most of the time um, uh, for it to work. Uh, and, and that's opposed to what how RAM data access approaches it. So RAM data access is a way for you to access the uh, RAM structure system building file database itself. So you can't have RAM run, for RAM's case, you can't have RAM running. RAM must be closed. Yep. Okay. Okay, f another question. Okay, how to how to customize RAM output reports? Um, well, when I was when you were working within the structural system and you're exporting, say, a CF, CSV file from the report, one of the reports menus, you really don't have the ability to customize that within the application itself, um, and that's that's one of the main ideas and drivers behind the SQLite feature that we're working on within RAM Manager. So. Once that's complete, uh, we're hoping that it will, the user interface and the table, the general table, table formats will, will mimic, uh, well, how the data is represented within the structural system model. So hopefully it feels very similar to how the modules are set up. And you'll have the ability to select what type of information you want to include. So maybe, it, maybe you're just interested in model geometry. Maybe you're only interested in a specific beam. Um, we're hoping that there'll be, there's going to be tools and features and filter mechanisms within the user interface to allow you to get at uh, any of the information that we have available. Within Excel, you know, it's you know the power's in your hands. So there's a uh, when Tao had mentioned the RAM estimator tool, um, and there's like an input table associated with that that asks you what type of entities you want to include in your output report, how you may want to filter them. And based on that input information, it only extracts the information that you're asking for. So customization of the reporting features in that sense is entirely up to the user. And you know that's that's one tool that's out there. You can create your own, and you can you can report as Wentel was demonstrating, however you'd like, including formatting and all sorts of things that are available in, in Visual Basic for applications. Yep. Okay. There's another question about loads. Um, let me just talk about structural system real quick, Wintel, and then I'll, I'll let you maybe sure. talk about STAD. It's, it's structural system loading um, is, is really only available for what you do in, in modeler. Um, and, and in that sense, it's really only available for what you do with gravity loads at this point in time. So if you're modeling uh, point loads, line loads, surface loads that are, you know, your dead load and, and and uh, live load properties that you create, all that can be input externally through data access or pulled out. Some of the processing of those loads in RAM gravity, say how, how the surface load is distributed as a line load or point load to a beam, is available in the RAM gravity results interface that's out there. But there's a, a limited, limited amount of information about how loading is applied in RAM frame and nodal loads and things like that. But, on our back burner, things to enhance uh, when we have time. Mm. Wintel, did you want to comment on Yeah, staff? before I before I jump into that, while you were talking, I was doing this. Um, yeah, so um, that was back to question four about customizing RAM output. So so Eric did this, uh, have this great tool where I ran it. And um, you can, because you can pull data in, and then you can um, have your reports however you like in Excel, and as you see here, very good tool, cost estimation in here. This is all based on um, on the model you choose. So should that change, you wouldn't be going in here changing it line by line. It will be updated automatically. Okay. Very powerful. All right, um, so in regards to STAD, um, yeah, you can, um, I'm, I'm not aware of any limitation when it comes to loads. So um, from from my perspective, I think it's it's quite open, as in you, you can do pretty much anything you do on a graphical user interface. Okay. Uh, there was a question, uh, I think, related to getting information out of Excel, um, and I don't know 
uh, out of Excel, excuse me, out of uh, STAD. I, and when tell maybe this is better for you, there apparently was an SQL query feature in STAD at one point. Do you know anything about that? Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not across that. I'm not across that. Okay. But yeah, we okay, can, that's, that's we can something definitely research that and follow up. Into. Okay, there's there's a question about are there similar features in RAM elements? Um, output wise, well, elements is is a very tab tabular base, so I, I think you can do a lot of copying and pasting to and from Excel. Uh, in that sense, what Wintel was referring to is you know using it natively. Um, in terms of an API, uh, elements has open re is what it's called and i think that's in a state where it's primarily maybe creating and i don't i don't i'm sorry i don't know a lot about it but it's you can use it in creating geometry related information in ram elements so i would assume that you can probably pull geometry out it's probably limited in in the you know design and analysis result analysis results that you can get out of it did you went out did you know more about no, no, RAM that, elements. That, that's what, what, what you said sounds, sounds about right. Open RE. Yep. Okay, there's, there's a question about question about uh, is it possible to apply a load using OpenStad? Wintow, did you want to comment? Yeah, sure we can. So why don't we just dig into the documentation right now? So if we are faced with any questions, because um, it's such an extensive API, right? So how will we go about this, right? Low case detail, low items, member low, at member uniform force. Yes, you can pretty much do anything. You can, so, so this is dealing with adding loads, adding concentrated force, adding concentrated moment. Yeah, it, it, it's all available to you. So it's not just the loads themselves, low definitions, low cases, right? Low combinations even. Add low and factor to combination. Okay, so, so it's all available to you. It's very comprehensive. Yep. A follow up stay online for to the a couple more minutes. Okay, yep. Okay. There's a follow-up just to documentation. Is uh, is that what you were showing there online, and is it uh, or up to date, or oh, is there an online this, documentation yeah, available? Opens that document. Opens that documentation. Um, I open as an Internet Explorer, but this is actually on your local drive. If you have STAD installed, go to your STAD folder. Go to Help OSAPP, and then um, index.html. Okay, so it's a, it installs with the application. There isn't actually a separate site out there with documentation. Oh, no, no. Okay. Um, a question about uh, STAD. How do you properly shell STAD via VBA? Shell. How would you address that? Shell. shell I, I don't. Yep, shell, S H E L L. Um. Interesting question. Is the intent to run that in a headless manner, maybe in a command prompt? Is that what we're getting at? It wasn't a lot more mm. so, in the um, question itself. Let's let's give it a. Why don't we give it a go? Maybe look for something else and come back to sure. it. If the sure. use if the user could post a follow up there, we can mm. we can try to expand. Does the RAM SQLite feature export member forces for load combinations? Um, it wouldn't at this time, and that in itself is tricky um, because member forces for beams in particular is a function of the station. So if we were going to do something like that, and it's probably possible, it may be limited to you know, there's there's settings within RAM frame to where do you want your forces displayed graphically, and maybe you select to have them at quarter points. So we could potentially include 
uh, some output uh, that's consistent with the selection within RamFrame and do something like that. That would be one way to do it, or maybe it's hard-coded to do it at quarter points, but the, the nature of forces varying at stations along the length of the member is tricky. Um, maybe you only are interested in that mem member forces at member ends, and that could be a, a field in itself within a table that we could export. Um, good point. I don't, I don't think it's available for um, like how reactions are, so I don't think there's an equivalent for member forces that's currently in there. But uh, definitely some things I think we can do and that we will certainly consider as we continue to develop that SQLite reporting.